So let's talk some more about ableism. So I have discovered recently that I am a verbal processor. That means I have to say things out loud for, me, for my mind to fully process them, to fully understand them. And this is something that many people do and uh, it's very rare when a person is exclusively an audio processor or the visual processor or a verbal processor. Usually there is a combination of these and more. There are also kinesthetics and other various ways of learning and processing information. However, we do seem to have somewhat of a preference for audio and visual learners, people who can learn by reading and by listening. And our education is mostly based on these two, the audio and visual processing. So, so there is definitely somewhat of a stigma against various types of learning. And if you're a verbal processor, you may often hear things like, uh, you're distracting to others when you read things out loud, or you talk too much, or give others a chance to speak. And whereas these concerns may come from a good place, um, especially in a school setting, as you grow older, you internalize um, verbal processing with something negative, with something bad, and you may begin to see verbal processing as something to be avoided. So this is why I'm making this video. I want you to realize that there is absolutely no um, moral attachment to any ways of learning. And if you need to say things out loud to process them, by all means do, because this is how you learn and do find ways to compromise whenever need be. For example, if you disturb people by you reading out loud or speaking about something, find a situation where you can avoid human contact perhaps or have a limited contact or have people who are great auditory learners accompany you. So um, for me, since I'm a verbal processor, talking things through has been immensely helpful and I'm very lucky in this regard. I do have a few people in my life who help me process by listening to me without interrupting and without judgment, without saying like, oh, you talk so much, why don't you just stop? <laughs> because they know that this is how I process information and they know that otherwise it will take me much more time to understand something um, and if you don't have such people in your life you can still find ways alternative ways to process verbally uh, video format is <laughs> one other possible outlet if you can uh, film yourself talk or read certain things that you want to learn this may be helpful first of all you're not going to feel like you're talking to yourself uh, even though that's what you're doing, you're talking to yourself. Uh, second of all, you will have a chance to re-watch what you have talked about or listen to it and then you will be able to spot certain inconsistencies perhaps or it will just be another way for you to recount that information. So filming and, or recording oneself are great tools to those of us who learn verbally. But learning with others, for me personally, is the best and I highly encourage you to seek out a person or multiple people to maybe form a little study group where people may be complementary towards each other's skills. Maybe one is a great audio uh, learner, another one is a verbal processor, and another one is a kinesthetic, etc. And I am by no means an expert in these, but I think that collective learning is really, really underrated and we should form more study groups and book clubs and learn together and help each other understand the world without all of the unnecessary judgment.